So you're doing your research about velocity banking, trying to figure out if velocity banking is real, can it really actually help me pay off my mortgage and my debt, and you're doing your research, which is really good. And by now, you may have already watched videos about velocity banking, how it works, and you may have seen some case studies already. But equally, you may also come across videos that claim that they debunked velocity banking, velocity banking is just a marketing gimmick, or that velocity banking is just a hype and a made up thing on the internet. And you may have checked out some of the videos even on our channel about this very topic, which of course we call it accelerated banking instead of velocity banking. And I too have seen many of these videos by different finance channels and content creators out there saying that they have completely debunked velocity banking and that's a complete hype. And when I check out these videos, they all seem to kind of get this one thing wrong about velocity banking and how the math actually works. So let me kind of give you a summary of what many of these content creators out there are saying that they debunked velocity banking, what they're saying and why actually their calculation might be off. So with that said, my name is Sam Kwok, one half of the Kwok Builders. I'm a serial entrepreneur, real estate investor and a certified credit counselor. And I've been teaching this concept, the velocity banking concept for almost eight years now. And having done this for almost eight years, I pretty much kind of heard it all as far as people debunking velocity banking, or they might ask me questions like, well, Sam, why is this better than extra payments? Why would you ever want to use this? Sounds like a smoke and a mirror. So having done this for almost eight years, I've seen nearly all scenarios and different comments, concerns about velocity banking. And I do want to address this one when people say they debunked or they killed velocity banking. So here it is. Now, I believe the only way to verify and validate any financial strategy is the the math, unless you're using some kind of a common core math, right? But using math, I'm going to show you why velocity banking concept works and why many of these YouTube content creators out there that supposedly have debunked velocity banking, why their calculation of velocity banking might be inaccurate and incorrect. So what I pulled up here is a sample or a pretty close to a representation of what a lot of the YouTube content creators supposedly are doing in terms of the math behind velocity banking. And I'm here to tell you that this is the wrong way of doing it, okay? So this is how they explain it. Now, they're gonna use some kind of an example, like a $20,000 line of credit, which you know by now with velocity banking, you're gonna use a line of credit, you're gonna apply that as a principal chunking payment against your mortgage, which helps accelerate the principal mortgage pay down. So we're gonna assume that we're working with a $20,000 line of credit with an income of 8,000 and expenses of 7,000, which gives us a net cash flow of $1,000 every month. Now that would mean that if we do the math, okay, if we follow the activity, we subtract 20,000 by 8,000, which gives us a $12,000 balance. And then we used the line of credit to take care of the expenses, gas, groceries, diapers, you name it. And that ultimately leaves us with the end of month balance of $19,000. Now, here's where things go wrong. A lot of the YouTube content creators and so-called financial experts are taking the end of the month line of credit balance and factoring the interest costs on the end of the line of credit balance itself. This is incorrect because with the velocity banking strategy, it relies on the daily interest calculation factored in as well, which I'll show you in just one sec as to what I mean. So if we take a 9% assumption, okay, let's just say this line of credit will cost us 9% every year. So what I did here is that I've taken this balance of $19,000 times 9% interest divided by 12 because all interest rates on lines of credit are annualized. So we have to divide it by 12 to get us to our monthly interest cost for this line of credit, which means that we have an interest cost incurred of $142.50. And what these YouTubers say is that the next month, the line of credit balance starts at $19,142. Now, what the error here is that a lot of these YouTube financial gurus they're assuming and treating this as if just like any other amortized debt, which is not how the velocity banking concept works. I'm gonna show you what the right way of calculating the math behind velocity banking looks like. Okay, so this is a calculator that we built for our clients and students and those that follow and use velocity banking for their mortgages. Now, I'm gonna show you that the assumptions are the same. So we're working with an $8,000 net monthly income, $7,000 of our living expenses, which is exactly the same as our previous uh, same variable, same assumption that we're making with the wrong way of calculating the velocity banking math. So coming back to this, again, $20,000 line of credit, 9% interest, okay, same thing here, 
$20,000 line of credit, 9% interest. Again, just to show you that I'm doing this apples to apples when it comes to the variables and the factors. Now, obviously, here in the living expenses, it says not including your monthly principal and interest. We're just looking at the line of credits. What I did is I zeroed out the mortgage information so that we're isolating the calculation just to the line of credit. So again, $8,000 net monthly income, $7,000 uh, living expenses, which gives us $1,000 cash flow. $20,000 is the line of credit that we're gonna use with a 9% interest rate on the line of credit itself. Now, what this calculator does, it actually factors in the daily cost of the interest on the line of credit as time goes by. So let's assume that we start using the velocity banking strategy on February 1st of 2024. We're gonna go and apply the $20,000 chunk against our mortgage, helping us save money by accelerating the payments as well as accelerating the amortization. Now what we have is a $20,000 balance and just like the velocity banking strategy dictates, we're gonna apply uh, our income towards our line of credit balance. Now, you might be seeing, well, Sam, I thought the income was $8,000. Why are we seeing $4,000 here and another $4,000 here? Well, what I've done is I'm simulating an average American who gets paid on the 1st and the 15th. You might get paid every other Friday or you might your pay schedule might look a little bit different. But for most Americans out there working at a job, a lot of them will get paid on the 1st and the 15th or at least every, every other week. So I simulated taking the $8,000 monthly income, breaking it into two on the 1st and the 15th. That's why you're seeing that breakdown right there, okay? So what you'll notice is that by taking that $4,000, let me zoom in for you guys. There we go, I know it's a little hard to see. I'm taking the $4,000 income and making a deposit against the line of credit. What that does, it immediately decreases the average daily interest. Remember, with a line of credit, we are getting charged interest on a daily level. So if the balance changes tomorrow, guess what? The interest cost goes up for tomorrow. So we're gonna keep the balance as low as possible. This is why we're taking all of our paycheck towards the line of credit balance. So now what we're seeing is that because we lowered the balance to $16,000, our interest cost for that day is $3.95. Now this continues until we make another $4,000 income deposit into the line of credit, lowering our balance to $12,000, which means we're seeing a further reduction on our average daily interest cost. Do you see that? So now we're paying $2.96 each day because our line of credit balance is lowered by the income. Now you might be saying, well, Sam, what about the expenses? What about the $7,000 living expense? Now I factored the living costs or living expenses on the 28th, pretty much really close to the end of the month. The reason why we want this is that the more separation there is between the income and the expenses, in other words, if we can keep the line of credit at a lower balance for a longer period of time, that means the line of credit is incurring less interest cost over time. Now, you might be saying, well, hold on, Sam, time out. There's no way for an average person to have all of their $7,000 living expenses to come out at once. Well, we can get pretty close. Uh, what a lot of the practitioner of velocity banking does is they use a credit card to do all their expenses, gas, food, restaurants, groceries, you name it. And what they do is they consolidate all the expenses into one because credit cards don't charge you interest right off the bat, not at least until the next billing cycle. Right, So it's a great way to further delay any interest costs being incurred on the line of credit because we don't want to increase the line of credit balance. Great. Now, you might also ask, well, hold on, Sam. Not all bills can be paid by credit cards. What do you do then? Well, let's simulate that. Let's say $2,000 of our expenses can only be paid using a checking account, right? be it auto loan or other credit card bill whatever the case might be. So to simulate that, I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and, and separate living expenses into two, and we'll go 5,000 on the 28th and 2,000 on the 22nd. So even so, what we're seeing is that our interest cost is relatively really low. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Let's go ahead and do a sum of all the interest that we paid for the month of February. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight the column where it says average daily interest. I'm gonna go all the way down to the last day of February. And what we're seeing is a sum, I know it's hard to see, so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here. I'm gonna do a sum of these cells right here. I'm gonna make sure to capture all of this. There we go. Up to the very last day of February. 
So what that gives me is $101 of interest for the entire month of February. So because we took our income, made a deposit against the, the principal balance of the line of credit, treated it almost like a checking account, we actually lowered the average daily balance on the line of credit. Subsequently, we are only paying $101.34 of interest on this line of credit using Velocity Banking compared to what many of our amazing YouTube gurus out there are saying that we're gonna pay $142.50. So now you can actually see the two differences, right? A lot of the YouTube gurus who use this calculation will simply just take the end of the line of credit balance for the month and multiply it by the interest, which is not accurate at all. It doesn't give you the full picture as to how the actual Velocity Banking calculation works using this. So again, $101.34 that we would pay using Velocity Banking Math on the line of credit. What our gurus are saying is $142, which is incorrect, right? So there's a, a difference of nearly $41 of interest costs. And yeah, I get it, it's only $41 for this month, but you continue to compound over time, that could turn into hundreds, thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars of interest saving over time. So I'm gonna go and put 101, let's see, what was the number here? $101.34. So $101.34, I'm gonna compare the two. There we go. Okay, $101 of velocity banking and $142 of simply making extra payment of $1,000 every month. You can see there's a clear difference in terms of savings. So this is why velocity banking is not the same thing as just simply making extra payments to your mortgage or making biweekly payments towards your mortgage. It's not the same thing. Velocity banking works because we're able to leverage a tool, a line of credit that allows us to reduce the interest costs at a daily level and leverage that math towards more interest saving, but most importantly, time savings. Now, some of you might be sensing a little bit of frustration from my part, and that's because I know a lot of these YouTube gurus and financial experts, they're incredibly smart, okay? They're, they're very credible, they have qualifications, they have training, they've been educated in the world of finance, and it frustrates me because they don't go deeper into actually figuring out how velocity banking works. They're just looking at the surface math and thinking, oh, this is just a gimmick. This is just a smoke and a mirror. And I sincerely wish that a lot of these YouTube content creators will actually look at velocity banking with the lens of humility, with the lens of actually looking at the math, instead of just doing this type of you know surface level math, which unfortunately does disservice to the entire finance community. And I hope that they can see this video and figure out, oh my gosh, like, Maybe I should do a little bit more investigation and research when it comes to the velocity banking math. Now, I get it. It took me two months to figure this out as well. Okay, I looked at this, I'm like, okay, this, is, this makes no sense at all. Why not just make extra payments? Why not make bi-weekly payments? Why even use a HELOC? I was very skeptical with the strategy as well. I thought it was some smoke and mirror and there, people are trying to sell loans. I thought that as well. But when I actually took the approach and went into the spreadsheet and really dug deep into how does this actually work from the sense, why are we even using a line of credit? What's so special about it? I dug deep and researched and I came out figuring out, oh my gosh, I'm actually saving a lot more money using a line of credit velocity banking than just doing extra payments or bi-weekly payments. The math doesn't lie. And I asked all of you and I asked our YouTube channel content creators watching this as well, please take the extra couple minutes to look at the math and not do this lazy junk math that a lot of people are doing, thinking they debunked Velocity Banking, which is not true. In fact, it's so not true that if you go to United Kingdom or England or Australia, they literally have an entire mortgage product dedicated to this concept called an offset mortgage. They're using it, okay? I'm pretty sure the entire country of Australia and United Kingdom isn't getting duped and scammed by this concept. It just so happens here in the United States, we don't have the same type of mortgage products as UK, New Zealand, and Australia. We have to use what we got, which happens to be a line of credit. And because of the math that allows us to do this, we can use it to save money. So if you're watching this, please share this with your friends or share this even with the YouTube content creator who claims that they debunked Velocity Banking as some myth or a, uh, um, a marketing gimmick, right? Share them with them. I would love to have a conversation. If I'm wrong, I'd be more than happy to say I am. But again, I've been doing this for almost eight years, been studying this for eight years, not saying I'm better than anybody, but because I've spent a lot of time, even my own, trying to debunk this, I, I came to realize that math doesn't lie. So having said that, if you want access to our Velocity Banking Calculator, I'll leave the link down below and check out some of our other free training and content. 
uh, we have it here in the YouTube channel, but the best way to see if this is gonna work for you is go get our free calculator and see for yourself how much money and time you're saving with our strategy. And we have additional free uh, webinars and content that you guys can go check out. So having said that, thank you, love you, appreciate you. Subscribe if you enjoy this and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.